This is the official post-event press conference for EFC 41, live from Carnival City, Johannesburg. Thanks to Carnival City for hosting EFC 41 and to all the fans that came out here. That was a good night of fights. Now I'm going to be announcing the performance bonuses awarded to Wesley Hawkey and to Anisek Kanyebe. And fight of the night is awarded to the middleweight title clash between Michael Lopperman and Liam Cleland. Questions? Liam? Um, it's, it's been a long road for you in the, in the UFC and, and first of all con congratulations on finally getting some, some gold around your waist. Um, there's, there's always been a, a kind of sentiment that you don't train hard enough or, or, or don't seem to uh, take the sport as seriously as you, uh, as you should. Um, does, do you feel you've finally kind of vindicated and, and how, if any, or if it was different, did this fight camp go for you? It's, um, it's a difficult question to answer. So I did start a proper camp. Um, I, had the, uh, I was blessed to work with people like Chad Stradorm. Um, you know, Chris, Dennis, uh, many people to name, even some of the guys from FFM, like, to, to help me with this. I, I managed a session every day, every morning, without fail for, I think it was about six weeks, may, maybe, going on, maybe going on eight weeks. I would have liked to have done two sessions, so the, the, the effort was there. I've still got a full-time work, um, but it, it does... It plays on your mind when you know your opponent is training more and getting hit in the head... Like, like, like they said, you know, getting hit in the head when you're tired is very, it's not a nice feeling. So that scared me into training quite hard, and I did train very hard for this fight. But it's not a lack of commitment; it's just other life expectancies which which you have to follow at times. Uh, does that answer the? Yes, perfect. Thanks. Uh, next question is for Wesley. Wesley, look great on the ground today. Is that because of Mornay? And what would have happened if you'd gone south to Toti a few years ago? Bluff don't go to Toti, but I've immigrated a bit. Um, yeah, um, Monet's uh, pushed me quite hard this last six weeks of training. Um, I was a bit uh, angry walking out because um, the organization played a love song for me. Um, I was a bit upset. As well, my ball box got stolen about five minutes before I actually walked out. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> I have, a, I have a question for Cedric. Cedric, you were, you were incredibly vocal in, in kind of hyping your chances before the fight tonight. And um, I think, you know, the, the first round you came out and uh, looked incredibly impressive and, and seemed to get shut down as the, as the fight went on. Can you explain how it went for you? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I was a high top, but, you know, I thought I could win and... Uh, Demar's got that experience, you know, he's got that title fights behind him and uh, he's going to be hard to beat with that experience, but uh, this was my first title fight, my first five round war, I think I did okay, alright, and uh, yeah, I'm starting a new campaign now and uh, I'm looking to fight again and again and again and get that belt again, you know, to get my another shot and get the belt, that's it. Cedric. Uh, Steve here from MMA Africa. Just to follow up on that, you, as a fight went on, you would come forward, land a shot that would connect, and you seemed to leave it at that. You weren't following through. Um, was it a, what, what, what was it a matter of that, that stopped you from following forward? You know, the, the Mart's got some great wrestling, and, uh, you know, I wanted to strike him a bit... Um, you know, fight my fight, but uh, he always threatens with the takedown. So if you overcommit on your punches, he's probably going to take you down. But uh, yeah, Demar did a great job tonight. Um, in my career, I never, I haven't felt like I lost a fight yet. I haven't ever got my ass real kicked. You know, I never, after a fight, I could say, "Listen, yeah, I got beat up bad." That, that never happened to me. So, to me, this is not a loss. It's a learning curve. Questions for Michiel. Michiel, looking at your record, you've been involved in some of the most outstanding bouts in the history of the UFC. Surely you're gonna take some positives from tonight and come back stronger. Um, yeah, um, fighting is what I love to do. Sometimes it's like life, things just don't go your way. Um, I trained really, really hard, like I always do for the fight, and um, 
I'm very disappointed in my performance and I don't think my performance may be just how things went but it's my life is what what's in my veins and what I would love to do so I think just um, I'll be back I'll be back in the gym on Monday my hands are a bit sore so maybe just take a week off see how it feels on Monday um, but I mean all my friends are still there and that's my, my family so if you go away from your, from your family for like a week you miss all of them so I just have to go back and see I've got a question for Jackie. Jackie, uh, first of all, congratulations on your on your debut and a, and a victory at that. Um, a lot of those, or, or a couple of those arm bars that Dita had looked to be pretty solid. Um, do you think your strength and weight advantage played a, played a massive role in you coming unstuck? I don't think the weight, but the strength maybe, yes. But the weight, I don't think, played a big role. Um, Zita was like really, she was putting up a really good fight and um, yeah, she was like really making me go for it. Next question is to Mark. Mark, you're such an outstanding athlete. What went wrong for you tonight? Um, you know what, sometimes you show up, you do everything right and something just happens. Lal is a very, very good athlete, strong, big. He had a good fight tonight, he won tonight. And I would really like to fight him again after I've had a few fights again, obviously. But no, he was the better athlete on the night. I don't think anything specific went wrong. I just didn't fight like I should have and I learned something out of that. So staying on that um, Hume Karam fight, and I'll pose this question to Lal. I think a lot of people expected a big stand-up war this evening, and instead we got one of the most amazing fights on the ground that anyone's ever seen. Uh, some really legit skills were shown from, from both you gentlemen. How did the fight end up there when everyone was expecting it to be standing? Was that something that you had planned all along? Um, I would have liked to have kept it standing, I did notice I struggled to get my shots off a bit. But um, in, in camp, the game plan was, you know, wrestle, take him down and work the ground because we knew I was just better there. You know, I, I believe I could have gone that whole fight standing. Like I said, I was struggling to get my shots off a bit. But when I got comfortable, I did get comfortable and I started finding the shots landing. But yeah, I mean, from the beginning, the plan was to take him down and work. You know, um, my coach likes me to have a high work rate, so that's what I did. The questions for Donnie. Donnie, your fight seemed to be a question of who is going to gas first instead of who is actually going to win. Surely that can't be a strategy to surviving that division, can it? Um, yeah, well, I don't think it's, it's really is. Um, yeah, but, but I know Bernal is going to gas first. Although I also guessed, but yeah, it must be the McDonald's. Eh? <laughs> a question for Tumi. Tumi, you're such a big personality in the EFC, and tonight really seemed like a fight where you could kind of um, match your 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 personality with your with with your skill. You were unlucky. Um, where do you see yourself going forward from this? I mean, are you, are you looking to take a, a kind of lesser fight or, or looking to come up against a, a big name again? Um, no less fights. Graham, you know what I'm about. The presidential campaign is still in full swing. Um, it's like we just lost another province, you know. The second one, we lost Cape Town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like I say, you know... Um, it's probably, it's part of a journey I'm on, I feel as well, personally. I was speaking to Adam backstage, man. He, he spoke of something that really hit in my heart, whereby, you know, he said, you know, you have to go through some dark things. And he made an example of even Robbie Lala, who was cut from the um, UFC to, you know, to bounce back. That's how I see it, you know. Um, I'm, I'm here to help the sport grow. I'm here to build this organization as much as it's, it's built me and my personality. Um, if they show faith again in me, I'll go out there and i perform, and that's, that's all I'm in there for.
Uh, questions for Demart. Demart, what would it mean to you to fight in Luanda, and what other plans do you have to, to grow the sport in Angola? Well, that would be the, truly uh, an honor and an absolute pleasure to be able to showcase my skill uh, in my home country. So it's quite exciting times. There's, still, there's a lot of work that I need to put in uh, facing a, a, a dangerous guy. I just got to keep working hard, you know? So I think it's, it's about time that EFC branches out and uh, keeps expanding like it's been. So it's quite, a, quite a, truly an honor and absolute pleasure. I think just, just as a follow-up, that a question for Cairo. Um, Demar did, did allude to, um, to going up to, to Angola. Can you give Chet any light on that for us? Yeah, we're working hard at it. You know, Demar and myself have made many trips up there. Um, pushing hard with the guys and we're making a lot of progress. Um, you know, it's, it's something that we're working on. Obviously, we want Demart to face Ishad Said next. That's his next fight. And we're going to be pushing for that for the end of the year. And we're pushing for that fight to be in Luanda. So that's the plan. Now, questions for Liam. Liam, you've waited four years for that belt. It might take a bit more to defend the belt. Is it time to kick information technology to the side? <laughs> um, well, this, this camp went pretty well the way it did. So. If I could try and squeeze in another few sessions a week, I think I could still manage the way it is. Um, so no, I, I, work has to carry on as it is. It, it, it's just the way it is, you know, I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> it's not like um, I'm a spring chicken anymore. And uh, I would love to do this full time, but uh, things being as they are, I think I'd have to still juggle the two. Thanks. We've got a question for Lyle. Lal, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's been a kind of meteoric kind of uprising for you since, uh, since bursting onto the scene. Um, you're a young talent. Um, CRT's kind of uh, becoming infamous for bringing these young champions, uh, mentioning, mentioning you in the same breath as, as Drikus now. Where, where do you see yourself in the next two, five, ten years uh, from a mixed martial arts perspective? I just take one fight at a time and I'm looking to have fun. You know, as long as I'm having fun, I'll be fighting. I don't know where I'm going to be in the next five to ten years, but as long as I'm having fun, I'm going to carry on fighting. I love fighting. I really do. Uh, next question is for Demart. Demart, your record now 11 and 0. It's been a great relationship at FFM with you. What's the secret? Sorry. I think the, the biggest thing is just con consistency. And um, for me, uh, constantly trying to Im improve as an athlete, you know. Ho hopefully today I did a little bit better than my previous fights and I'm uh, just trying to get better. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Like, honestly, I spend so much time in the gym. I think that's just it, you know. That's why I I'm able to come and keep winning. Uh, question for Wes. Wes, um, you're alluding to you in your post-fight interview that you that you're ready to have another go at gold. Um, what do you think has changed? Do you think you're ready to go again? Um, and and um, yeah, I'll just give us your thoughts on that, maybe. Uh, Wes, yeah. listening from Vegas. No, it's fine wherever he's from. No pressure. <laughs> you know how it works. Um, yeah, like I said uh, in my interview after the fight. Um, in this sport show, when somebody loses, they probably the fans think, okay, well, that's your last fight. Okay, I'm, I look old, but I'm young. Um, and I think with every fight that goes past, I, I, I rejuvenate myself and um, maybe Wade Groth, Durban, I don't know. Hey, let's make it happen. The Mots, congratulations this evening. Um, 11 in a row, fantastic work. I think a lot of people weren't expecting what you gave tonight with a, a phenomenal stand-up performance. Um, definitely one of your better performances. And you looked like you had a lot of fun out there. Uh -huh. Was the plan to stand and trade? Does this look like fun? <laughs> <laughs> While you were fighting, you looked like you were enjoying yourself. Like, he, he, first round, he, he came quite, quite aggressive and he, he swung quite a lot. He hit me really hard. But, um, yeah, the, my stand-up is coming along, you know. I'm training with the best guys, I think, in the in EFC, so 
I'm working, I'm working really hard in, in uh, my complete game and everyone just expects me to, to take down and lock down, but it's good that people can see that I'm, I'm a, I'm a well-rounded well athlete. So I'm quite happy about that. All right, that's it for EFC 41. The two most intense individuals in the EFC will collide. The most polarizing champion in the EFC, Norman Vessels, returns to hostile ground in Cape Town to defend his light heavyweight title. But waiting for him is the most ferocious fighter in the history of the organization. The DRC powerhouse, champion Dolce. Will the calculated attack from Vessels once again see him stand victorious? Or will the pure power and ruthlessness of Dolce allow him to smash his way to the top. It's Norman Vessels versus Champion Dolce for the EFC Light Heavyweight Championship. EFC 42, 8 August, Grand West, Cape Town. Tickets and broadcast information at efcworldwide.com.